Hi, it's Lynn with Soft Squares. Today we are going to make the easiest baby quilt ever. It's a flannel quilt. It takes 10 inch pre-cut flannel squares. You don't have to take pre-cut, but this is what makes it super easy because they're 10 by 10s. And we're going to make a small baby blanket. I'm gonna do it in just about an hour. Stick around. We are going to make a rag quilt and I'm going to use this 10 by 10 package of flannel to do that. And I got it on sale, which made it even a better deal. If you've never made one of these, this is quick and easy and fun. Um, you're just going to cut your items into squares and actually they don't have to be square but I'm going to make them square because this package is pre-cut into 10 by 10 squares that's what I'm going to use now there's 40 in there and because it's flannel it is really thick and fluffy and you're going to put two pieces one on each side both facing out so your front and your back and then you can put some flannel or sorry batting in the middle I'm not gonna put anything in the middle because I want it to be lightweight yet it is going to be warm and cozy because it is flannel you could make it out of fleece you could try other materials my favorite ways to do it with flannel and sometimes I put batting in it today I'm not so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to kind of mix it up so I want the greens all on one side and maybe the the grays or the whites on the other side so it's kind of like a two-sided blanket versus just both sides are similar did that make sense so to do that I think I need more light I'm gonna go through and count them but this one right here could go either way and I'm gonna take all of these and count them and I want 20 in each stack and I'll decide where these are gonna go All right, you probably saw what I did. I have 16 of the light, 16 of the dark, and I'm going to <laughs> half, split this pile up in half. Now, actually there are 42 pieces in this pack instead of 40. They're always kind of random, and there are actually 17 in this pack, so I really need one less. So I grabbed three. 17 plus 3 is 20, and then this one's 16, and then this is a, a, a group of five. The reason I'm not doing the 21 is because it's kind of hard to work with 21 when you're trying to make a quilt out of it. So we're really going to be doing four rows of five, which will equal 20 blocks. I can't get anything to go into 21 other than three rows of seven and that's just a bit skinny for a blanket. So we're gonna have an extra block, extra two pieces, so that's okay. And you can take them from anywhere you want. I think I, I like the idea of, of how I just did it. So now the fun begins. I'm gonna strategically put these just in different places in the pile. So as I pick pieces up, they will not be near each other. Because what I'm gonna do is pick up a front and a back and go to the machine. So I'm gonna call this the back just for simplicity. I don't know why, but I think it will be the back. But I am actually really liking this. It doesn't matter which side it is. Okay, still, there we go. So what we're gonna do is put one face down, one face up, and then we're gonna to go to the sewing machine and sew an X going from corner to corner. You can freehand it, you could get your um, pen and mark it, 
as long as it's a washable pen like this. I like to use a ruler when I go to the machine for long rows like this. And it helps me sew straight because I just don't freehand straight very well. So I'm going to use this just to help guide me to make it nice and easy. I'm going to chain piece this whole row. And then we're going to assemble it and I'll show you what comes next. If, just a little FYI, if you wanted to put batting in here, you could. What you would want to do is this is a 10 by 10. So you would probably want to do either a 9 by 9 or an 8 by 8 inside and the way that these blocks come together let's just kind of make another block your raw edges are exposed which is why the batting would not be the same size so eventually we are going to make a seam down here and it just depends on how much space you want here, if you want an inch or if you want a half an inch, but then we're gonna go through and cut it to make the raw edges. I think a half an inch is, is plenty, but if you want more, so the point is, do you want your batting to be on the inside of this seam? Otherwise it's super thick and it could actually show up here. Just make it a tiny bit smaller if you decide to do that. So anyway, let's go back. We're doing the ones without and I'm gonna finish making my piles and show you what's next. So my goal is, if possible, to not put the same pattern next to each other. On the white side, um, that is not 
uh, as noticeable when I get them together and there's actually quite a bit of this particular print so it is um, there are going to be some squares here and there that do match up but on the darker side it's a lot more noticeable when you have the exact same print and my preference is to mix it up but um, on this and sometimes the backs are matching up where the light ones are and it's okay so let's keep going uh, I'll put these two if I can I want them as mixed up as possible so um, again, I'm putting the, oh, I need the greens together. See, it's super easy to get yourself confused. I want the darks on the inside. And ideally, I like to reinforce the edges. You can chain piece. And it does work. I just, um, this blanket has exposed seams. So that's why I like, I'm not even worried about that. You're, it's gonna be not even visible. All right, so there's two. Let's see how they're different. And they may end up to the same. Now, if you ever played Sudoku, it's kind of what this is. <laughs> you can lay it out on your wall or a bigger surface. I'm not working with very many squares. I'm trying to do it on my um this here at my sill surface it may or may not be easier that way let's see what do i have left i should also look at it that way somehow i'm missing there we go i just have two rows left at this point so i should make sure i've got different ones so i want this on this row because i Again, it's that Sudoku game. There we go. There's my four. Here's three. I'm missing a piece. How can I be missing a piece? Oh, there it is. You probably could see that. We're going, land, look underneath. Okay. So... Oh boy, okay, I want this one there. So that way each row for me, I like them to be different. Now the back sides, we can't always get that. And I'm noticing there's quite a bit of this in there and it is randomly ending up by each other. And on this particular square, this is considered light. Remember I had um, to split up what was left over and some are on the light, some are on the dark side for this square it is considered light so if I can I'm gonna put it here to break that up uh, there's a lot of things that are out of my control if you um, did a lot of planning and it really really wanted it was important to keep them separate you could make it happen this will be just fine it's cute and scrappy I'm also not worrying about direction so I want them everything just to turn so all right so we have and what's funny is um, just happens that we have these on both sides oh yeah those are different those are very different okay so if I do it this way should I do it this way yes I'm doing a half inch seam. My steady buddy here is really nice. If you use the tape, you can make it longer and I'll be honest, it would be a lot easier. But this does work. assembled block already so let's see how I can put that on there and keep my color separate I can see right now 
I don't want to put these two right there. Oh my goodness, that's funny. Those are like almost exactly the same. So for sure it's either gonna go like this or it's gonna go on a other side. Now on the back, I'm just curious how that's looking. It looks great. All right, so again, put them together. I was able to break up my solids. You're gonna do nesting down here, and this is a pretty thick seam. I like to reinforce it. Again, these are exposed, and it's just a linism. It's one of those things that I do. You don't have to. I just like to reinforce. eighths is a little bit bigger than a half and that's a nice seam allowance let's see we are going to go this way with this one so all I'm doing is just back and forth one extra time not necessary. The nice thing about this row is right now I have a four by four. So no matter how I put this together, I can put it on any edge of the existing blanket and rearrange it if I need to. So if I'm finding, cause I'm just being random, that I have two squares uh, that are lining up on the green side, try a different side. I'm chain stitching so I chose to not knot that off. I just decided to just do a little back stitch. Again, I just want extra reinforcement on the edges and I'm not worried about that. It got caught when I was going through it, but it's going to be cut and frayed and you won't see it. At all. And sometimes that happens, you just make the most of it. don't want those two by each other, do we? Let's do this. So one thing on the back that I think would be really noticeable is the, where the green is to be next to each other. These others 
are not gonna bother me. Okay, time to add this to this. Now let's see. Nope. <laughs> now we also can turn this around and do it this way. We actually have eight different options because it's two different directions and four sides. Yeah, no, these two match. These two match, these two match. These two match. This works. Let's see what the back looks like if I'd have green trees by each other. Oh, and I don't. Well, this is, this is a winner. Okay, so we're done with that. One last thing before we start um, fraying, which is a really good project to do in front of the TV and the car, <laughs> is to do a just a stitch around the edge because we're also going to be fraying that and we don't, you know, we have an open edge here. So I prefer not to start on the corner and just do whatever what you want. I'm going to do the width of the foot just because it's almost a half and it's just easier. It doesn't really matter. There's the front side. Here's the back side. I've already gone around the edges. And all that's left is to go around and snip it. I'm gonna take these scissors, which honestly are a little dull up here. So I know my best sharp is down here. You might have scissors that are easier to use up near the tip. Obviously, I need to get these sharpened. Now, there are special scissors like this, specifically for this. It's just a quick little 
snippet, I've never been able to get these to work right. And I don't know if they're just not lining up right or they're dull. They just never worked for me. But I like the concept of it. These are by Fiskars. The way it works is you should be able to, and it's supposed to make the tension a lot easier on your hand because you're going to notice your hands could be tired. Just be able to do this, but see, for me, it's not cutting at all. So I'm not going to use these. I am going to use my regular scissors. And this, this will take me some time because I have carpal tunnel on both hands. I just had surgery on this hand. Surgery is coming up on this hand. I don't know how long my hand is going to let me do this. Let's say this again. So um, I've had, I have carpal tunnel on both hands. This hand had the surgery in it two weeks ago. It is doing good, except it has a band-aid now. But my fingers are still getting their, their sensation back, but I'm not left-handed. But this was my worst hand. So this hand is getting done next week. And right now, it might be okay, but this type of movement and stuff is really gonna irritate this. So, I wish those other scissors were working, because that would be in my best interest. But for me, because of my carpal tunnel, I know this is gonna take me longer than most people. But I'm gonna show you what you do. Now, you see how we've got this right here with all of these? Now, remember me telling you these scissors are not very sharp. I do have to use my tip, and you just wanna pull it back on both sides of the seam. Again, you don't want to go down to the seam, but you want this to be able to fluff. And you're going to find threads everywhere. And now that I've got that, I can go around like this. And every, I don't know, what is that, a half an inch or so, or whatever width you want to do, just cut into that not up to the, the thread or you're gonna have a problem. This is a really good project for sitting on the couch, watching TV. Driving in the car might not be as easy because of bumps and stuff, but the point is you don't have to be at your sewing machine or even in your sewing room to do this part. Now we're coming up on a bulk. We're going to Take our scissors and open it up. Let's see. Scissors are going in for sharpening soon. Okay, so there's that one. Then it's doing it again over here. Okay. And then you still have this little edge to fray. So go ahead and lift it up so what i'm doing is that thread that uh, seam goes right through there i'm cutting on both sides of it without touching it to allow it to stand up when it frays okay so now i can get in there and finish this row and it is a lot easier if you can use the tip of your scissors but this is what works best for me. So now that side is done. See, and you've got this, and when you wash it, it's gonna become fray. A little frayed mess, which will be cool. So you're also gonna go around the edges, and you're just gonna keep going. And then you're done. You are all done. Just be sure you go through and get all your threads from sewing. After you wash it, uh, it's going to need a haircut. I call it a haircut, but there's going to be a lot of threads from the fabric that are going to be kind of an issue. The beauty of using a pre-cut is, at least with this line, is their pinked edges. There won't be as much um, fraying or loose threads after it gets washed. And I personally like to wash these twice before I give them away, just because it seems like there's still a lot of fraying and balling up. I'm not worried that that happened. We're going to snip around it and everything is going to stick up. So that's it. That's how simple this project is and you're done. Again, your option is without flannel or sorry, without batting or to do it with batting. The assembly process is the same. The only difference is this is a little thicker.
This just came out of the dryer. You can see the X's if you look really close. Um, it's frayed perfect. Here's one side, here's the other side. Here's that extra little two pieces I had turned it into just a little like a texture blanket you can keep them together I was gonna put some ribbon tags in it but I didn't the babies will still play with this but this turned out to be um, taking 40 blocks so I did four by five is the size of this and if you want it bigger just make it bigger but this took one package of pre-cut um, 10 by 10 squares that were flannel all right, we're done. Do you see the difference now? So all these little frayed edges have now fluffed up. And because of my wrists, I actually did not cut as far into or close to the seam as I would have normally done it. So really, my, my little snippets, you can see better on the edge here, are kind of just topical. I mean, they're... I would have liked them to go on a little bit lower, let's put it that way. But they sure turned out well, really cute. I'm actually super happy with that. So now what's left is to take my scissors and go around and trim off this random stuff. So this is the haircut <laughs> that I was talking about that would be happening. Now, if I didn't have pinked edges on the fabric like I did because this was a pre-cut, it would have a lot more thread and you should have seen what came out of the lint trap in the dryer. And this is a baby blanket, little teeny tiny five by three blanket. So um, definitely when you put this in the dryer, check your lint trap, maybe in the middle of it. And I actually was thinking I would need to wash this twice. It was some of the blankets I've made in the past I have. It might just be that it didn't have as much to fray. Um, I'm very happy with this result. I think washing it once is good, but two is my um, standard. So I'm just gonna go through and finish trimming this up and then we're done. That's a baby blanket baby quilt, rag quilt made out of one 10 by 10 flannel charm pack. You can do it too. Hi, it's Lynn with Soft Squares. We are going to make the easiest, um, yeah, let's try this again. I'm going to do it in about, I think an hour is probably underestimating. It can be done quickly <laughs> we've got a light let's see we have a light <laughs> we have a light square and a dark square 